my name is Lance Williams and on today's lunch break we're continuing to talk about a biblical worldview and today the subject is going to be on death yes I want to start with death because death is relevant to all of us we're all going to die someday if unless the Lord comes back before then and we all deal with death with family members and friends loved ones things like that and death was not in the original plan of God God did not uh, he created everything it was good death was not in the plan death did not come until the fall and the scripture says for the wages of sin is death the wages of sin is death hang on let me look up a scripture real quick there's another one that just came to mind So in Romans, it talks about the wages of sin is death, that death comes from sin. Sin produces death. Also in James 1.15, it says, Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. That's James 1.15. So death comes from sin. Sin produces death. It was not in the original plan. And again, we're talking about the biblical stance, the biblical worldview on death. Death is related to sin, but for the Christian, death is the best part of living. Now that might not seem to make sense right now, but that is the biblical stance on death, that death for the Christian is the best part of living. What's awesome about death is, you know, when we... When we die, death does not mean ceasing to exist. Death just means separation. So when we die, we just separate from this body. That's what death is. Because we are eternal. The scripture talks about what is seen is temporary, so our body is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So the spirit in us is who we really are. That is the unseen, so that is eternal. So death is when the eternal and the temporary separate. It's the best part of living for the Christian. And we're going to talk about why. Why is death a good thing? Well, the first reason is it limits Satan. So death purges evil. You think about some of these tyrants and some of these dictators in the, the history of the world. Uh, people like uh, uh, Stalin and Hitler and Pol Pot and Mao Zedong and a lot of these uh, tyrants throughout history, they were very, very wicked, evil people, killing millions and millions and millions of people. I think, I can't remember the numbers, but I don't know if it was like 60 something million that Mao killed. I mean, just, I mean, most of you are familiar with the Holocaust with Hitler. And see, why, why is death a good thing? Because if these people lived forever, if these tyrants lived forever, and they formed a coalition, that would be a terrible, terrible thing. I mean, Hitler was already trying to take over the world and really wasn't that far off from doing it. He, I mean, he was... Close, closer to succeeding than what a lot of people realize. I think it was an act of God that, that kept that from happening. But if these people throughout history all formed an alliance and, and got together, then they would be unstoppable, you know, apart from God. Obviously, nothing is impossible with God. But with, with death happening, with them people not living forever, or <laughs> forever, excuse me, with them people not living forever, then they have to, the enemy has to start over. Because see, when these people die off, now the enemy has to, he has to start over. He has to start from scratch. And so death is a good thing in that sense because it makes the enemy start from scratch ever so often. Also, people with deformities, people with disabilities, now, even people with sickness, which I believe, according to the scripture, that Jesus has already provided healing for all of us, so we can be healed in this life. But, but for the people who, 
who don't believe in healing or, or they don't want to trust God for healing or whatever the situation may be, people with, with deformities and disabilities, it's a good thing that death is happening because they don't have to be like that forever. They don't have to live with those things forever because once they die and they separate from this body, if they're Christians, if they've received the Lord Jesus, then they become, they're already like Him in the Spirit, but then they become like Him. They don't, they don't have to be limited by a body that's disabled. And so that is another uh, beautiful thing about death. So in Philippians chapter 1, let's go there. Philippians 1. Let's go down to 21. Philippians 1, 21. It said, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Verse 25, Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. So Paul, he, he says he's, he's hard-pressed between the two. He really wants to die. I mean, that's what essentially what he's saying. That is what he's saying. He's saying, I would rather die and go be with Jesus, but I'm going to remain here because it's better for you. See, we can all get to a place like that. Paul had a biblical worldview on death. And see, a biblical worldview is not just thinking something one time. It's, it's ingraining it in us by focusing on it, focusing on that way of thinking. So when, when issues happen in life, I have trained myself to say, what does the Word say about it? And because of that, I have developed a biblical worldview on everyday things. And you can do the same. And that's the purpose of this, of this lesson and this, this series. But having a biblical worldview on death, just like Paul, we can get to a place where, man, we're hard-pressed between the two. And also when others pass away, when our loved ones pass away, we can, we can by having this biblical worldview, and first of all, we've got to believe that the Bible is the Word of God. So if you hadn't got that established, you need to go on a study of why the Bible is the Word of God. Because it is, and it's very obvious. I uh, want you go through a study on that. But by having a biblical worldview, we can receive comfort from the Father in the face of death. One time my grandmother passed away, and she's the one, um, I mean, God's used many people to help get me where I am, but she's the one that God used to get me to Karis Bible College and ended up transforming my life. But when she passed away, I remember at, at the visitation, I walked up to the casket with feelings of sorrow. Because, see, at that time, for a moment, I was focused on the death. I was focused on her not being here anymore. But I walked up to that casket in sorrow. But then I remember, I remember I just lifted my hands and I started praising God over, over the corpse of where my grandmother used to live. And I was praising God. And I just started thanking him, and see, I've shifted my mindset, and I started, I started remembering the biblical worldview of death. And I started thinking of God's word, and I just kept thanking him for his goodness. And as I was doing that, the, the word of God just started to arise in me. And I started thanking him for his word. I started thanking him that she don't have to, to always be sick, that she don't have to go through this suffering like she did for the past several months. And I was saying, Father, thank you that she's in your presence right now. For the word of God says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And that she's in your presence in all your fullness. And she don't have to suffer through this sickness and this hurt and this pain anymore. She don't have to suffer with 
seeing some of her loved ones not walking with you and, and just all these different things. And see, I shifted my mindset. I, I got my mind on the biblical stance on death and I actually started laughing. I mean, I just started laughing when I walked up to the casket crying and with feelings of sorrow. And just a moment, I was laughing and just praising God and I, I found joy in the face of death. Why? Because I knew what the Word said about death and I believed it. And so in that moment, I shifted my focus from the loss on, unto the answer. I shifted my focus unto God's Word and it literally gave me joy in the face of death. And that's just a great testimony of what, what the power of having a biblical worldview can do for you. And so I remembered God's word on the subject of death and it brought me comfort and it helped me deal with that situation in a way that's supernatural. A lot of people didn't deal with it that well. It, it lingered for a long time. But me, I was able to deal with it very quickly and get it off on the Lord. Why? Because I had a biblical worldview on death. It's amazing. I just mentioned this, but 2 Corinthians 5, 8, uh, 5, 7 or 5, 8 says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So if you're a Christian, when you pass away, you're just separating from this body and you're in the presence of, go in, in the presence of God instantaneously. That is awesome. If we really believe that, then death is really not that bad. But a lot of us have the fear of the unknown. But the scripture talks about perfect love cast out fear. So if we have that real relationship with Jesus, have the correct knowledge, have the correct world view, then we can truly not be fearful of death because we know that if we were to die or when we die, we're going to be in the presence of God instantaneous. And we can know that for our loved ones too who have believed on him. In John chapter 14, it talks about Jesus going to prepare a place for us. And he said, if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you that it was so. But he's going to prepare a place for us to dwell with him. In Isaiah chapter 65, it talks about a new heaven and a new earth and that we will not remember the former things. That we're not going to remember all the hurt and pain down here because we're going to be in the presence and the glory of God. Man, that's just awesome. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, it talks about there will be no more sorrow, no more pain. So you put that together with what I just read before that. We're no more sorrow, no more pain, and we're not going to remember the former days. I believe we'll remember what God's done and how God brought us through, but we're not going to remember all the hurt and suffering and pain. Man, that's going to be awesome. And my final point is death is better than living forever in this fallen state. Now, if we, if we hadn't have fell in the garden, then living forever would have been great because we would have lived forever with no sickness, no poverty, no hurt, no pain. But since sin entered the world through our fall, then death entered in. Sickness entered in. All this hardship that we go through, it entered in. So when we die, we actually, we depart from this body, but we depart from all the hurt, pain, and loss. And we're in the presence of God. And so death is actually a blessing for the Christians. For the ones who've received Christ, death is a blessing. Because you get to escape all this corruption and all this wickedness and all this evilness in the world, you get to, you get to escape. You get to escape the weakness and the frailty in your body. You get to escape all that, and you get to be in the presence of the Lord. And then there's coming a day when so we're already in the presence of the Lord when we pass away. But there's coming a day when we receive our new body, a glorified body with no sickness, no disease, no pain and infirmities, no deformities and disabilities. See, if we choose to look at death through the lens of the Bible with a biblical worldview, with a biblical paradigm, man, death is such a blessing. 
And we'll continue to talk about different subjects and having the biblical worldview on, and it will transform your life. If you'll listen and adopt, if you'll, if you'll take on the biblical worldview on each and every subject. But you've got to get in the Word to know that. We're going to talk about it here, but you've got to get in the Word. You've got to know the Word and be a doer of the Word and have this biblical worldview, and it'll transform your life.